Welcome to today's edition of the show podcast. Hemingway's Michigan roots start in 1898 when his parents, Clarence and Grace Hemingway, bought waterfront property and built a cottage on Walloon Lake, formerly named Bear Lake, according to Fetterspiel's book. The Hemingway family lived in suburban Oak Park, Illinois, and the Michigan summers exposed Hemingway to a different kind of life. After Hemingway's mother received an inheritance, the family bought a farm across from their Walloon Lake cottage, Fetterspiel said. Hemingway's family named the farm Longfield Farm, and they planted fruit trees, potatoes, and vegetables. Ernest Hemingway would spend his teenage years, often overworking on the farm, reporting back to his dad about how the crops were going there, Fetterspiel said. So, Ernest Hemingway the farmer is not one of the images that quickly comes to mind when people reference Hemingway. But that farm was on the Horton Bay side of Walloon Lake, so that also put him over there, and he would oftentimes spend nights actually right there on that farm, even though there wasn't a home there for him to stay in. Ernest Hemingway and his first wife Hadley Richardson at their wedding in Horton Bat, Michigan 1921. Fetterspiel's book said Hemingway returned to Michigan every year until he got married to his first wife, Hadley Richardson, in 1921. I think he just absorbed northern Michigan, Fetterspiel said. I think it shows up as a writer when he finally understood that after writing crime fiction, in essence, stories that he thought would sell in popular magazines, he realized and took the advice of experienced writers who said, write what you know. The advice would follow Hemingway even when he went to Paris in the 1920s. In the City of Lights, Hemingway rubbed elbows with Gertrude Stein and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Despite the glitz and glamour of Paris, Hemingway tacked a Michigan map on his writing room wall and wrote stories about Seney, a town in the Upper Peninsula, Horton Bay, located in Charlevoix County, and Kalkaska, a town 30 minutes from Traverse City. He wrote what he knew and like any great artist, he invented parts, he left out parts, Fetterspiel said. He wrote for his own experience and tried to not make it autobiographical. But it was time that the character Nick Adams was born. Nick had many similar traits to Ernest Hemingway, but Hemingway himself would say it's not me. It's absolutely not me, but you can't help but see the parallels between the two. Northern Michigan life served as a hard drive of experiences, places and observations for Hemingway, Fetterspiel said. He would pull these memories when he started writing. Eventually Hemingway would go on to write about his other experiences in World War I, the Spanish Civil War and Cuba. He Hemingway would look for that next adrenaline rush of experience and use that as motivation for what he wrote, Fetterspiel said. But that first generation of writing, even his first published novel, The Torrents of Spring, it's set in Petoskey. Fetterspiel said some people would argue that Hemingway's first generation of writing, often set in Michigan, is some of his best work. In terms of the new Burns and Novick documentary, Fetterspiel said he's curious to see what the filmmakers come up with. From conversations he has had with Novick and the short clips he has watched, Fetterspiel said audiences will hear more about Hemingway's mental and physical health. Filmmakers looked at the possibility of Hemingway having a closed head injury. The documentary will also explore the topic of Hemingway and gender. In an interview with the Today Show, Burns said Hemingway inflated the idea that he was a brawler, a deep-sea fisher, a heavy drinker, and an overall man about town. Although these were true Hemingway traits, Burns said these traits were hiding insecurity. Hemingway's masculinity obscured his art, and he often observed how men and women got along or didn't, Burns said. What we discovered when we pierce the veil of the toxic masculine image is that there's a person who's curious about gender fluidity, who has put himself in several amazing short stories into the mind under the skin, the writer Edna O'Brien said, of the women in it, Burns said. Burns said the reputation of Hemingway being a misogynist and an ultra-macho guy doesn't completely crumble, but it's only part of the story, 